Hi, Purple Ella here. Today I'm going to talk to you about autism and special interests. So I'm going to talk to you about what special interests are, what my personal special interests are, and how I feel that special interests can benefit autistic people. So a lot of people can relate to having a hobby. A lot of people have a hobby which is an activity or an interest that they participate in in their leisure time. For autistic people, those hobbies can be called special interests when they are very intense, something that the autistic person feels that they need to participate in for their general well-being, that they become very focused upon and that they gain like a great deal of knowledge or if you like an expertise in because they become so focused on these particular interests. So what are my special interests? So prior to getting my autism diagnosis I didn't really realise that I had special interests but when I look back over my life I definitely have participated in special interests. So when I was a child my special interest was 100% performing, dancing, acting and all the different ways of being on stage. And I know that some of you will say, oh well yeah but lots of children do dancing and lots of children do acting. What I mean is that I spent five evenings a week and all of Saturday and all of Sunday participating in this special interest. I attended lots of dance classes, I was in an amateur dramatics group, I was also in a drama group, I did as many performances as I could, I was always in school plays. All I thought about was performing, how to get better at performing and in between that I was really just thinking about when I would be a performer, when I would get next to get to perform, I was researching, I ended up doing a drama um, or theatre studies A level, I ended up doing a contemporary dance degree at university, it was really very consuming and it was all that I was interested in to that kind of extent. Of course I had other smaller interests but this was a special interest which I became expert in and very obsessed in. And then at some point along the way, when I went to university and I was studying dance, I met someone who was a juggler and I learnt to juggle and I got involved in the circus scene and then circus kind of took over, which was sort of unfortunate timing because I was at university studying dance, but I managed to incorporate the two. But circus became my main focus. Any spare minute that I had, I would be practising my juggling and so I got um, quite good at it quite quickly and I would be researching circus and I wanted to have only friends who were involved in the circus so that I could just talk about my special interests with them. I wanted to incorporate circus stuff into the dance that I was studying. I just wanted circus to be like my whole life. So then I came to Bristol, where I live now, and I actually did a full-time circus training course and I worked as a circus artist for about seven or eight, in seven or eight years, I would say. Um, and then I kind of was really struggling generally, I was having children, I guess at some point being a mum became a special interest because where other mums would want to talk about other things or would want to like have something outside of their life other than their children, I didn't really understand that because all I wanted to do was be the like perfect mum that I could and did loads of research and read loads of parenting books and loads of parenting theories and it was just my obsession was with being like the best mom that I could be and how to do that and that was sort of my special interest for about I guess about four years and then I was diagnosed as being on the autistic spectrum and I became aware of special interests and I was able to see the pattern that I had had throughout my life of getting into something but then just getting really into it. So where someone would get into something and enjoy it, I would get into it and then that that would I would want that to be my life. I would want to be like either have it as my job or have it as like consuming my whole life and have everything that I do be about this thing and then I would move on to something new and that would become the main thing and that would become my focus. And so I after being diagnosed became aware that this was what was happening, that I was having special interests and I guess I became a little bit more um, purposeful in my special interests. Uh, so that was when I discovered Lego and this is still a special interest of mine. I've been enjoying Lego and into Lego probably for about five years or four, yeah four or five years now from when I got my very first set to now where I have got around 
20 sets but I've also got uh, a setup where I've got all my Lego bricks ordered by colour and all of my specialist smaller pieces organised in little containers and I spend quite a lot of time thinking about Lego and looking up Lego stuff online and thinking about what I might make next and watching um, like Lego Brickmaster, a programme they had on Channel, Channel 4 to try and improve my Lego techniques and thinking about how to get better at it and wanting to go to Legoland and wanting to really make Lego like a big, like wanting to have like Lego themed things, just like being like really, really into Lego. Um, but unfortunately, Lego is a special interest. As much as I love Lego and it will always be a special interest, it is quite an expensive special interest because Lego sets and Lego bricks are not cheap. So I've kind of deliberately set out to get some other special interests that are more sustainable that I can do more in day-to-day -day life. So when I was diagnosed with autism, because of my own situation, I wanted to find out everything that I could about autism and what it means to be autistic so that I could improve my situation and come up with strategies and like basically make my life better and learn to cope with being on the autistic spectrum. And then it sort of tipped from doing research for my own kind of benefit into being something that I became and am still completely obsessed with because I find it so fascinating that people have different types of neurology and that led me into doing more research which led me into wanting to make YouTube videos on the topic so that I would have like I guess an opportunity to talk about autism with people who might be interested and that led me into doing public speaking which has led me into doing um, work with individual autistic children and individual autistic adults which has led me into having like autistic friends um, which means that basically I have a lot more opportunities to talk about autism as much as I want to and for those of you who know an autistic person or are autistic you will know that there is nothing more joyful than being able to sit and talk about your special interest with someone who actually wants to know about it so I guess this has given me like an outlet for my kind of obsession with autism but basically I probably spend about two hours every day researching, reading about, working in, thinking about, talking about autism and I'm probably being conservative with that estimate so you don't think that I'm a complete weirdo. So autism is another one of my special interests and then I also have developed a special interest in dogs. So as you guys know who've been watching me regularly, I have a dog who I got about 18 months ago as a puppy and who I love very very much but through having her, I've become a little bit obsessed with knowing the breeds of different dogs and like being able to spot the breeds of different dogs when I'm out on a dog walk, being able to say, oh, that's a beagle, oh, that's a um, Labrador, oh, that's a cross between a Labrador and a Collie, being able to identify those dogs. So if you ever see me on a dog walk, I will probably come up to you and say, oh, what breed is your dog? To confirm whether I've got that right or not. I've also become really interested in training and the different theories behind the ways that you should train dogs and the best diet for dogs and the best, like, really wanting my dog to be, like, a massive, massive part of my life so that I can, um just think about dogs all the time so if I'm not thinking about Lego, autism or dogs I'm probably busy looking after my kids <laughs> basically because that's what I want to spend my time doing and thinking about and then finally recently I've actually acquired a new special interest which is really wonderful because uh, it's something that's a little bit more insular I guess than the, my other special interests. I mean Lego is quite insular but as I said aforementioned issue with kind of costs around that. Um, I have recently started a sketchbook. Now I have absolutely no talent in the area of art whatsoever. I am definitely distinctly untalented and terrible at drawing so even though I've really enjoyed it all my life I've never done it because I felt like I'm not good at it so I can't do it. And then recently I bought myself a sketchbook and I bought myself some pencils and I thought do you know what it doesn't matter because I'll be doing it for me. So now where most people would be like yeah sketching that's fun I'll do that occasionally. I have, since I got my sketchbook, which was about a month ago now, been drawing every single day for at least an hour, possibly two hours a day. If I've got some spare time and I'm not with my dog and I'm not working in the area of autism, I will generally now be found drawing. I absolutely love it. I don't, again, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm getting slightly better at it because I'm doing so much of it, but the goal is not to be brilliant. 
but like the satisfaction that I get from the process of drawing and looking through my sketchbook and because it's quite like an emotional like journaly kind of sketchbook has become like a real focus of my life and a real help so I would say that has kind of probably crossed the line into special interests now. So those are my special interests. Now I want to talk to you. Now Special interests have historically had a bit of a bad rap really, like oh they're obsessive, oh they stop autistic people from doing stuff or like doing this kind of socialising that we think autistic people should be doing and they're not, it's like stopping them from being as neurotypical as we would like them to be and it's you know like this whole like oh anything that we do that is outside of the norm being like oh yeah but that's weird and that's different and that doesn't make you look normal so we should stop with these obsessions and we should stop with that. But actually, I think special interests can be a really beneficial thing for autistic people. These are the ways that I think they can benefit autistic people. Per first of all, they can turn into a potential career. So obviously, my special interest in autism has led to me having a career as an autism advocate, speaker and trainer. Something that I never in a million years would have thought I would end up doing, but something which I passionately love. It's a career. I get to go to work and do something which I really, really love and which I get respect for, I guess, and which I get positive feedback for. So that special interest has actually turned into something that is now a career for me and that can happen for many autistic people who develop a special interest. They're also very relaxing. I find that when I've spent some time participating in my special interest, my sensory issues can be reduced, my overload can be reduced, my anxiety can be reduced. It just generally makes me feel good in a similar way to the way that stimming makes me feel good. So they can reduce overload and they can reduce overwhelm. Additionally, they can raise self-esteem. Now, if you've watched many of my videos, you'll know that I'm always banging on about raising autistic people's self-esteem because we naturally tend towards lower self-esteem. Now, if someone has a special interest and they become good at it and people notice that they're good at it or they achieve things because they're good at it or even just the knowledge that they are good at it can help raise that self-esteem because it's, I'm not useless, I'm actually someone who is really knowledgeable about autism or I'm actually someone who is really knowledgeable about coding or video gaming or swimming or whatever it is. Feeling good at something inevitably leads to raise self-esteem. They can be used to motivate. Now this is a very dangerous area because some people see this as, oh well I'll say you have to do this thing before you can do your special interest and I really don't agree with that because that's like saying this thing that's really important to you and that you love I'm going to take away from you if you don't comply with the way that I would like you to behave which I'm just not really on board for. However for me personally I know that today for example I've set myself up with I have to do some filming and I have to do some paperwork and I have to do some childcare stuff and then when I've done all those things I can sit down and do some sketching so I'm like using it to motivate myself personally. Obviously if I didn't do those things I would probably still allow myself to sit and sketch but the idea that I've got that to motivate me is really helpful. Also if one of my special interests is involved in an area of knowledge, say a TV documentary or say something that I've gone to learn about, a lecture or whatever, that motivates me to be so much more interested in the topic if it has a connection with my special interest. So they can be quite motivating. Additionally and finally, for my uh, eldest child, uh, her special interest has really been fantastic social currency. So her special interest is video gaming and because it's a special interest she's gone beyond the level of most children who play video games and become like a real expert like she answers questions on I think it's called Cura on the topic of video gaming and in primary school and now that she's in secondary school she has developed friendships and friendship groups based on the fact that everybody knows that she is good at video gaming and she can give hints and she can give tips and it's just like a real social currency between her and her social group where if she didn't have that she might not necessarily have a topic of interest that can help connect her with other people so I feel like they can be fantastic social currency also, for me personally, I have definitely made friendships and widened my social circle as a result of my special interest in autism because it's opened me up to other people who would like to tap into that special interest and learn from me and then kind of we realise that we get along and some friendships have developed off the back of that, including like some of my really closest friends now. So social currency is definitely not to be underestimated with special interests. 
So that's all I have to say about special interest for today. If you found this video useful, do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you'd like to keep watching more videos along this theme about autism or about hypermobile spectrum disorder. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.